My name is Steve Faulkner, welcome to Real Magic Review, and this is Dig It by Ian Bailey. Before we do this review, can you please like and subscribe, check out onlinemagic.co, that's my membership site. Hundreds and hundreds of video tutorials. Way back uh, from 2013, I started making this. This is a lifetime of work. Well, it's not, is it? It's from 2013 onward. But the work that went into it before that was a lifetime of work. Wasn't. I started when I was about 19. So you know what I mean. Have a look at it. Special guests uh, uploaded live sessions every week. You can join us on Zoom. Nearly every week. Can't do one this week because I'm performing. Uh, but most weeks you get the gist. Have a look at it, read the Trustpilot reviews, ask people, people love it, nobody hates it, and it's glorious. 9 99 a month, ridiculous. Anyway, have a look at that. And of course my podcast, Steve Faulkner's Magic Show, um, the latest one, Tina Leonard, is stunning. They've all been brilliant. I've got two more corkers coming up, so do check out Steve Faulkner's Magic Show wherever you get your podcast. I do this all on my own. That's not a sob story, I'm very happy to. But what that means is I need all the help I can get to, to spread the word. So any of my stuff that you like, do please share it, tell your friends. And uh, and the podcast is great for non-magicians as well. I've had loads of non-magicians said they've really, really enjoyed it. So have a look at that, Steve Faulkner's Magic Show. Dig it. Ian Bailey. Ian Bailey, measure by measure, measure for measure, was the last trick I reviewed of his. And this is, on the face of it, a gag. But it's not just a gag. I will explain. And, well, I'll tell you what it does first, and you can watch the trailer, but then I'll put clips of it on. But basically, there's different ways of doing it. You, somebody chooses a card, they choose a different card. One of the cards, seven of diamonds. You kind of get the first one first. What's your card? They say two of spades. Turn it over, it's to three of spades. You go, oh no, I've got one too many spades. And then, from the cards, you pull out a little spade. So it's a, it's a, it's a pun, and there's a the little spade. Now, and then you can show it, give it a little shake, and the seven of diamonds is just the other card that was chosen. Butchered that, of course, but it's simple. The concept is simple. So I saw this and went, oh, it's, just, it's one of those tricks that is a joke. And jokes are, well, if you're a comic performer, they're kind of sacred jokes. So if someone goes, here's a joke for you, you kind of go, yeah, but is it going to suit me? Is it, it it's not going to suit me basically with myself. But then I kind of went, no, it's not, it's not just a joke. Because the joke is part of it, but it can be one of those really funny moments, depending, and this is important, on how you play it. So the joke isn't a great joke, all right? Because when we think of a spade, it's not a far reach to think of that spade. Three of spades, that's a spade. And a joke for a joke to be good, there has to be a little bit of a long, a kind of wider gap of thought before we make that connection. So when you say spade, what do you think of? People are going to either think of cards or that. So it's not a great joke. But when you add the element of surprise in it, and this is the bit I didn't really think about, because of the gimmick, or if you're a card worker, you don't need to really use the gimmick, your, your hands are empty. And with the gimmick, your hands are totally empty. T-shirt, you know, just the cards. You can show the cards, you know, pretty freely. And then you pull that from a deck. There's a surprise. So you've got a joke that's kind of tongue-in-cheek. You know, you're not going to do it seriously as if that's the kind of closing line to your, your stand-up show. But it's a surprise. Then they kind of make that little leap, which they, they're into the trick. So it's a little bit more of a leap than it would be. And then they go, oh, right. But they still don't know where the spade comes from because they've just been, you know, the cards have been freely handled, etc. So it, it's more than I thought. Just to clarify, uh, a couple of things I missed as well, so I might as well put it here. The cards aren't freely handled by a spectator. Now, they can be if you're, again, if you're handy with cards, um, but you kind of, there's clearly nothing underneath the deck or anything like that when you show the deck uh, beforehand. Now, I didn't mention how easy it was. It is really easy and and you can do things that are a little bit more difficult if you don't want to use the gimmick and stuff. But it's an easy trick. You're going to need to uh, know a, a very simple force. Ian helps you out with that 
which is really, really super simple, but you are going to have to be handy with a deck of cards, I think. And there are ways of doing it when, obviously, if you're not, but I think you're going to have to know those basics to be able to do the trick. But it is still a little spade. And for those of you, as I often say, that are serious mentalists, serious magicians, you're not going to go, there's a spade, I'll just put that down, it'll blown you away, is it? It's not that, you know, it is for a certain type of performer. Now, Ian said, and I think this is important on the download, that he doesn't do much card magic. So when people say show us a card trick, he does this. And it's almost like that is the joke, that this is the trick. Doesn't mean it's not a good trick. Like I said, they don't know how it's done. But it's a blending of the two that really works, I think. But for me, there has to be... A t I mean, this is a ridiculous image. There's a lovely thing on the trailer as well where he uses perspective and kind of fools you with that. But this, to me, is a funny image. Big and small is very funny. Stupid little things, stupid big things. So if you're the right type of performer and you can pull that off, I think there's a lovely moment there. And this is, by the way, I'm going to say this and it sounds like it's an insult. It's really not. It's the opposite. This can be almost like a little throwaway thing. And I mean that with lots of affection. If we pepper our routines with these moments of silliness, which totally do suit me, that as a joke on its own, but as, as that, the joke with the thing, put it down, carry on. Great, and, and they're the things that really enhance our magic. And I do loads of them. You know, you could say things like uh, the disappearing finger. Now, the, the you know, Mayor Year did his routine with the, I've just bought it, finger fantasies, is that what it's called? Um, <laughs> that thing, where the, I can't do it really yet, but where the, the finger vanishes and comes back. All that stuff, if you read that, you go, well, that doesn't sound really good, but you see it, and he doesn't do it as a throwaway thing, but you can't, I've seen lots of people do that. They're doing stuff, go, oh, the finger's gone, it's back on again, carry on. Brilliant, I love all that, you know, the neck stretch, of fun, all that. <laughs> all those things, I do that all the time, because they know that I know it's ridiculous, and it's, it's just something that enhances everything. So, as that, I would actually feel really comfortable going, oh, oh one too many spades, yep, yeah, oh, there it is, okay, we're all right now, there's your card. And of course, the trick isn't just you've pulled the spade out of the deck. It is obviously that their card has changed now to the card that they chose. And you've done the, the move and the card arrives here. So when we think about all that, there's a little bit more to this. It doesn't mean it's an amazing trick. It doesn't mean it's an amazing joke, but it is something fun. And I think magic should be fun. So I think it's a fun little thing. For me, I, I thought that... If I was to do it, take it out, put it down, carry on, and then stop, do some other stuff, and then get a card wrong, a seven of diamonds, come back to it as a callback later on. Oh, there's that silly little spade we have. Let's give it a little, give a little shake. There it is. Go back and then carry on. You know, maybe a multiple selection, you come back to it. And I, I think that's quite a nice thing too. So as a fun prop, and I'm all about fun props at the moment, since reading Charlie Fry's book, I've been buying all sorts of things. Karate coins, and I know you can do very magical routines with it, but just for a moment, there it is, gone. Um, Titan's Finger, one of the best things I've bought in forever. I think it's glorious, and that was, again, inspired from Charlie's book. Finger, it's not called Finger Fan, is it? Whatever, the May Year did routine. Plastic Finger coming off, all that stuff. Absolutely adore it, and I'm having so much fun using it. And this is along those lines for me. There are different versions of it. There's a way he talks about mentalism, all that. For me, keep to what it's for. The gimmick, you can be used with any deck of cards. Um, once you see it, you'll be able to make one, and that's totally fine. So you, you can change this existing gimmick very easily by uh, adding whatever custom cards you've got. Very quick, not going to take any skill or anything. Or if this wears out, you're going to be able to make another one. Super, super easy. And it's, a, by the way, uh, interesting, not interesting, important is that even though you know, a little spade, very funny. It is well made. It's not going to break. You know, this isn't something that you'll drop a couple of times and you have to kind of get another one. Because it is a niche thing, you know. It's not the sort of thing you're going to be able to just make up. Because it does look good. It looks a, like a really cool uh, little prop. So there it is. Again, not a world-changing magic trick. Not an amazing magic trick. Not an amazing joke. But a fun prop to put in your case in your pocket. Great with friends. And I love doing all that stuff. And I would take that out and gig as part of that whole thing that I love to do. So uh, Ian Bailey, dig it. Any questions? I always miss stuff out, but we don't want a 20 minute review. And do ask in the comments below and I shall answer questions at some point. Um, talking of which, 
because the reason I'm going to do lots of them is because of the podcast. Do check out the podcast, Steve's Magic Show, Steve Faulkner's Magic Show, uh, Steve Faulkner's Magic Show, wherever you get your podcasts. I've just recorded some really wonderful interviews, and the one that's just gone out is Tina Leonard. They've all been great, really eye-opening. You're hearing people talk, magicians talk about not just magic, um, but in ways I've rarely heard them talk before. So all great stuff, Steve Faulkner's Magic Show. Check out the interviews there, and please leave me a five-star review. Um, I know it's a big ask, so listen to it first <laughs> say leave a five star actually you might as well if you like my stuff leave a five star review and uh and i'll love you forever onlinemagic.co yes i'm a very busy boy that's why i'm all tired of behind around the eyes uh onlinemagic.co do check that out as well and instagram at steve faulkner at real magic review and other things i'm sure take care see you later